I made a video a few days ago called What is the Meaning of Perennial Wisdom? I answered some of my own words. And now I'd like to continue and explain in a little more detail using the words of other uh, writers and sages of the past. So bear with me if you don't mind while I read you just a couple minutes. Some people dream of winning the lottery. I say global metanoia. I dream of kingdom come, the alpha and omega, the kingdom of heaven on earth, paradise, Shambhala, divinity incarnate. Hallelujah. It is one and the same, Avatara, that having passed into the ocean of life, rises up in one place and is known as Krishna, and diving down again, rises in another place and is known as Christ. The avatars like Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Christ, stand in relationship to the absolute Brahma as the waves of the ocean are to the ocean. That's from The Treasury of Traditional Wisdom, page 791, a quote from S.R. Ramakrishna. We then have Swami Sivananda, who says, The truth, Rama, Krishna, Jesus, is the patrimony of all humanity. And if that's not enough, let us go to our great treasury of Christian patriarchs, none other than the famous or infamous Saint Augustine, who said, the heathens have discoursed of th certain truths, and these they have reached by virtue of the eternal laws of God, which are working in all men. When they speak what is true, and not by the mere light of their own nature. We'll then go to Islam, to our great beloved saint, Ibn Arabi. My heart has become capable of every form. It is a pasture for gazelles and a convent for Christian monks and a temple for idols and the pilgrims, the pilgrims Kaaba and the tables of the Torah, and the book of the Quran. I follow the religion of love, whichever way his camels take. My religion and my faith is the true religion. We then have St. Augustine, beloved St. Augustine. Thank you, brother, coming in here right now. Listen to all you dogmatic followers of darkness as we listen to this. The very thing that is now called the Christian religion was not wanting amongst ancients from the beginning of the human race until Christ come in the flesh, after which the true religion, which already existed, began to be called Christian. Thank you, St. Augustine. From quoted in the Treasury of Traditional Wisdom, page 793. And then we move on to the Bhagavad Gita. One of These are the greatest hits of God, my friends. The greatest hits of God. And, uh, you know, years ago, before I even knew the things I know now, I had imagined writing a book called God's Greatest Hits. Now I have. Uh, oh, Bharata. Whenever there is decline of virtue and predominance of vice, then I embody myself for the protection of the good and the destruction of evil doers and for the reestablishment of the Dharma. I am born from age to age. We then have Swami Ram Das, but, um, 
who says to us, there are not many gurus, there is only one guru. And guru, for those who want to know what the word really means, means dispeller of darkness, which means light. Hallelujah to that. We then have Kobo Daishi, excuse my pronunciation, whether one says gods or Buddhas, there is no difference between the water and the waves. Whether one says gods or Buddhas, Christ or Allah, there's no difference between the water and the waves. And then we go to Ko Cheng Keng, who says, if one objects that this Taoist method is exactly that of the Zen Buddhists, we reply that under heaven, Two ways do not exist, and that the sages are always of the same heart. Let me read this again. I like this. This is from a Taoist tradition. Taoism relates to the Tao Te Ching, the I Ching, Lao Tzu, Confucius, etc. If one objects that this Taoist method is exactly that of the Zen Buddhists, we reply that under heaven, two ways do not exist. And that the sages are always of the same heart. We then have Pythagoras, who was anticipated by the Indians. We then have Oyesa, who says, oh, I believe was a Native American prophet, if I remember correctly. It is my personal belief, after 35 years of experience of it, that there is no such thing as Christian civilization. I believe that Christianity and modern civilization are opposed and irreconcilable, and that the spirit of Christianity and of our ancient religion is essentially the same. Yes, yes, yes. And then, mind, essence, transcendental intelligence, noble wisdom, etc., the dharma of the imagelessness, of the essence nature of ultimate reality is the dharma which has been proclaimed by all the Buddhas and when all things are understood in full agreement with it, one is in possession of perfect knowledge and is on the way to the attainment of the transcendental intelligence of the Tathagatas. This is serious, my friends. Very serious. Very intense. Bismillah, Ramani, Rahim, Namaste, Hallelujah, Amen, Hosanna in the highest in the Gloria in Excelsis, Deo, Deo, Deo. God is Jehovah called, which name of his implies or or essence or the he that is. Robert Herakid from the Mysterium Magnum also quoted in the tradition, history of traditional wisdom. And, wow. Now, I think we're getting ready. Oh, what did I write here? I lost the first part, but here. Clearly indicated, St. Augustine referred to, clearly indicating that St. Augustine referred to the Perennis Sophia, as if the Christ of the Bible verses, the Christ of the Upanishads, and of the Vedas, and Zohar, and Bible, and Quran, and all transmissions of pure holy intent, as if Christ was the spiritual heart of the Perennis Sophia, of the one holy faith, the one sacred heart entering all that is holy and sacred, says Buddha. And finally, from our beloved friend, Hermes Trismegistus, known as Thoth. Look him up if you haven't heard of him. He says, and this is really important, it is impossible that that which is divine should go astray. And here we have Ru Roysbrook, who says, in the loving introversion of the just man, all venal sins are like to drops of water in a glowing furnace. 
And now I will conclude with a quote from Hermes Trismus Justus Thoth. He was uh, Thoth in the ancient Egyptian school, founder of all of the of, of all the humanities, uh, an immortal, one who had become immortal, and he was known as Hermes uh, Trismegistus to the Greeks, and he said, never, my son, can a soul that has so far uplifted itself as to grasp the truly good and real slip back to the evil and unreal. Now, this warm...